momentum is not predicated upon what you see in the natural. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Momentum, spiritual and kingdom momentum is not dictated by what you and I see. What you and I see will deceive you. Our natural vision will deceive us. That's why the Bible says that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. Look at your neighbor and say, walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith. If you walk by what you see, guess what? You'll eventually quit because the enemy is dumping oppression on you. The Bible also says don't make provision for the flesh. Why? Because your flesh will always pull you in the opposite direction of what God is going to take you. Sometimes we're not even oppressed or opposed by the enemy. Sometimes we are opposed by our own flesh, our own desires that are not lining up with the will of God. So the enemy sends people, he sends things to oppose you, to keep you from pushing and going into the direction that God has set you out to go in. So the spirit of God will give you the ability that you can't get in the natural. Spiritual momentum will do things that you can't get from work ethic, you can't get from being talented, you can't get from being good looking, that you can't get from being charismatic. See, spiritual momentum is an undertone, it's an undercurrent. Nobody ever saw it coming. And when it shows up, nobody knows where it came from. But the whole time, and I told you, I'm going to give you a point on how to build spiritual momentum. See, you know how the Bible, the Bible always talks about, and suddenly. You know, when somebody comes on the scene, and suddenly, oh man, he came out of nowhere. She came out of nowhere. But suddenly, never suddenly just happens. Do y'all follow me? Suddenly doesn't happen just by somebody stumbling into it and this automatically happened. No, suddenly was already taking place in the background, but nobody saw it. What you do in secret, God will what? He will reward you openly. The word reward means compensation. Compensation means payment. My momentum does not come from my hard work, my work ethic. My momentum comes from the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. My momentum does not come from me. My momentum comes from God. And I get my instructions from God. God, I do what God tells me and God does what I can't do. Whatever God does in the earth, I always tell you this, he uses you and I. So if you're not available, guess what? There's no need for you to have this kingdom momentum. The kingdom momentum is available to those who are in need of it. If you're, if you're not work, if you're not doing the ki- work of the kingdom, you have no need of kingdom momentum. Come on, somebody. You have no need of this momentum that I have if you're not doing my work. Why would I pay you if you're not doing the job that I asked you to do? Why would I put you on payroll and give you all of these benefits that comes with it if you're not going to do the job? When I call you or when I need you to come in, you can't. You're always calling in. You always laying out, and then when you get here, you not. I can never find you. Somebody say availability. availability. When you become available to God, guess what? His benefits are ab- available to you. In order to build momentum, you and spiritual momentum, you have to have faith. Kingdom and spiritual momentum is God literally pushing you for His agenda. Once you become available, God will push you. To make sure that you do what he called you to do. So in other words, once you become available to God, there's nothing God won't do to make sure that his purpose in your life is not fulfilled. Somebody say availability Availability. is the best ability. You don't have to be talented with God. You don't have to be good looking with God. You don't have to be tall. You don't have to be the strongest. You don't have to be the fastest because it's not by power and it's not by your might, but it's by God's spirit. Why will you prosper? Why will you succeed? Because the momentum of God is pushing you into your destiny. This is why it's very important. Notice that I said momentum will push you into your destiny. This is why it's so important that you don't compare yourself with somebody else. Because the momentum of God will never push you into somebody else's destiny. Y'all don't hear me. You compare yourself to, we live in an age where social media is ruling and reigning and dictating our life. 
But momentum of God will never push you into somebody else's lane. So that's why we have to be careful not to get consumed with what somebody else is doing or how somebody else is doing it. But you find personal satisfaction, you find personal value in the presence of God. It's easy to walk, into, walk in humility when God has validated you. See, whenever you start needing validation from, from people, then you could be wavered and pulled any direction. But when your validation comes from God, you know your assignment. He says that to, to delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. See, when you and I delight ourselves in God, our desires line up with what God wants for our life. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and then these things will be added unto you. See, a lot of people asking for certain things, but they're not seeking God first. When you start to seek out fleshly desires, it moves the hand of God from pushing you. Why? Because you, if God, God will never push you into a place that will destroy you. Come on, somebody. A lot of the things that we desire are not good for our soul. So God will never push you into a place that will destroy you or destroy your soul. God will allow you to live a life of poverty than, than to destroy your soul. He was willing to do whatever because guess what? It was about works. Now, here's the thing that I want to talk about. I'm going in a different direction now, but I want to show you how religion is. The, the young rich, young ruler, he had been doing all the works. Whoo, Jesus. Holy Ghost dropping now. See, religion is by works, but not your heart. See, religion, you can do things in the natural and not have your heart into it. That's why God says they serve me with their lips, but their hearts are far, far from me. Because it's a total different ball game when I just have to dress a certain way, walk a certain way, speak a certain way. That's religion. But when your heart has to get involved and you have to look out for people who are less fortunate than yourself, when you have to do things that the Bible says that esteem others higher than yourself, then that involves my heart. And it exposes the issues of my heart. See, religion allows you to hide from spirituality. Religion allows you to hide behind the works. The disciples said, Jesus, why do your disciples transgress against the tradition of our elders? Why do y'all oppose and do different than what our elders have taught us? And Jesus said, why do y'all elders transgress against the tradition of God? I was telling somebody the other day that sometimes you have people who are, are qualified in every aspect of life, but their heart disqualified them to walk with the kingdom of God. They got the right credentials. They got the right walk. They got the right talk. They got the right degrees, but yet their heart is disqualifying them from being elevated by God. The momentum of God will push you into a place that the momentum of man can't. Yeah. Come on, Holy Ghost talk. Once you become consumed with doing the will of God, spiritual momentum will push you to where everybody else is working hard and you just show up. Prayer, humility, and consistency are the keys to momentum. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. You don't have to go there. I'm just going to call them out for you. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6 says, So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. He will lift you up in honor. When it says honor, that means God will lift you up in front of people. God will lift you up in front of people who counted you out. God will lift you up in front of people who tried to trip you up on the way. He also says that, listen, I will prepare a table for you in the midst, in the presence of your enemies. Why? Because you have humbled yourself. When you humble yourself, that means that I don't want to do it my way, God. Humility says, no, I don't want to do it my way. I want to do it your way. James chapter 4, verse 6, it says, and he gives grace generously, as the scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but give grace to the humble. Do you want the enemy opposing you or you want God opposing you? I want y'all to think that's not a trick question because oppression 
comes from the enemy. But the Bible says in James 4, 6, it says that God opposes the proud. What does that mean? Someone who wants to do it their way. And they think it's because of their way that they are succeeding. And opposing opposition means that God will fight against you. Do you want God to fight against your plans? There are some people operating and moving in the name of God, and God is fighting against them. Woo! Bible says that God opposes the proud, means he fights against you when you want to do things your way, when you won't listen, when you won't take advice, when you won't take wisdom. Humble yourself. Yourself. That means do it yourself. You can pray for humility, but God don't give humility. You, you, you act in humility. Humility is an act. Now, God will put you in situations to allow you to exercise humility. See, God will never have you doing something from him, for him and you don't treat people right. Shh. Let that sink in. If you're always gossiping, talking about people, there's a character issue. Humility always esteems other people higher than yourself. Humility is, is actually strength under control. Humility says that I get my validation from God. So regardless of what you think of me, I'm still going to be who I am. So I'm allowed to put you above myself because I know who I am. Listen, when I esteem you above myself, do you know what God is doing? God is esteeming me. When I put you above myself, God always considers me whenever I go to prayer. When I pray to God, guess what? God considers me. Why? Because I, I put his people before myself. And when you esteem, see, that's why Jesus said, he said, the greatest among you should be the servant. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. You know why? Because Jesus knew who he was. I'm the son of God, so this is not beneath me. I'm the same, I'm the same person that will wash your feet, but I go out here and cast out a demon. I'm the same person that's going to wash your feet, but I'm also going to take away your sins. Humility is strength under control. Jesus knew who he was. Jesus told... Pilate told Jesus, he said, don't you know, answer me. Don't you know I have the power, the ability to take your life? And that's the only time Jesus spoke. Jesus said, listen, first of all, you can't take my life. I lay it down. And in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, and it says, then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants, want to be follow, my follower, you must give up your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake. You will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? Woo. If you hang on to your life, you'll lose it. Somebody say, let it go. go. It's a scripture that God gave me when he called me to pastor. And I was, I don't want to do that. I don't. I do not, God. No. Come on, man. Give me something else. I'm saved. I love you. But God said, no, this is what I'm calling you to do. And he told me, he said, he, the scripture, plain as day, that's why it's so good to get this word in your spirit. The Holy Spirit will always bring back scripture to you when it's time. And he told me, he said, if you try to hold on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you lay it down for my sake, you'll gain it. So I want to say to you today. What are you holding on to that's keeping you from actually having the hand of God pushing you in your back?